Hello and welcome to our worship on Wednesday. It's lovely to be able to join with everybody to share in worship for this brief period. Our call to worship. Come all of you, our God is here. Come from every corner and place, from every tribe and tongue and language. Come strangers and friends, believers and seekers, the lost and the found. All are welcome. Come, let us worship. Come and bow down. Come, let us offer our hearts and our lives. Come all you people, our God is here. Let us pray. Lord of all, we come to offer all that we have and all that we are, body, mind and spirit. We come to offer you our joys and struggles. We come to celebrate your extravagant love and abundant gifts and to give thanks for your unending promises to us. Lord of all, teach us to hold nothing back and to give our all as we serve you in this world. Father God, we confess that we can often be half-hearted when we come before you, yet you are never half-hearted towards us. You commit yourself to our care, although we don't, do not always deserve it, and you love us with a passion beyond our understanding. We are sorry for our lukewarm love and our lacklustre worship of you, and seek your forgiveness for our shortcomings. Lord, we are astounded that you continue to forgive us, that you continue to have faith in us, to renew us and refresh us with your spirit. We have the assurance of your forgiveness, for which we are truly grateful. Glorious God, we worship you with praise and thanksgiving. We thank you as we join in proclaiming your glory. We thank you for the many ways that we are able to worship you. And we thank you that you sent your spirit to empower us and to fill us with your love. And we thank you for this for this opportunity we have to be with you, to praise and worship you without limits. Amen. And now we'll share in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we'll now join in our first song this evening. All my days I will sing this song of gladness, give my praise to the fountains of delight. Beautiful Saviour.
first reading is taken from Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6 and reading a selection of verses. David again brought together all the able young men of Israel, 30,000. He and all his men went to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim on the Ark. They set the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which is on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the cart with the ark on it, and Ahio was walking in front of it. David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums and cymbals. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obededom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sounds of trumpets. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. As he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went to their homes. Amen. Thanks be to God for this, his word. Psalm 24, a psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does, does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him and seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your head, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, ye gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Amen. The other weekend, my daughter and myself were celebrating we were celebrating in true style, jumping up and down, shouting, cheering and hugging each other. It wasn't a big special occasion. It, we were celebrating Lewis Hamilton winning the British Grand Prix. We are ardent Formula, Formula One fans and have always supported British drivers and more particularly of late Lewis Hamilton. And after the last two years of struggling with the car and performance, it was wonderful to see him back on the podium. Others have been celebrating too. The winners of Wimbledon, winning the Scottish Open. And we had hoped there would be some celebration, celebrating for the English football team at the Euros, but sadly that wasn't to be. But there are many different occasions that we can celebrate in our lives. From the birth of a baby, weddings, birthdays. And we even celebrate funerals when we're celebrating somebody's life and achievements. And we can also celebrate recovery of health issues, a new job, a first house, so many things, not only to celebrate, but to thank God for. But I wonder how well we celebrate our love and worship of God. I can't say I have ever found myself jumping up and down and dancing around while worshipping God. The nearest I get is a bit of swaying and bopping to some of our hymns, particularly the newer ones 
but I certainly wouldn't call it dancing. King David was celebrating. He was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem after it had been captured by the Philistines. David was so faithful to God that he saw God as being the cornerstone of the new temple to be built. This Ark was a divine item that was to be the centre of the new Jerusalem. No wonder David was leading his people with singing and dancing and shouts of joy, worshipping God as they made their way to the city. Psalm 24, which we heard, is one of David's psalms, and it is said that this one was being sung as they celebrated and rejoiced at the return of the ark, their most treasured possession. I'm sure you all have tre treasured possessions of some sort. I've got a couple of mine here. This little brooch means quite a bit to me because it reminds me of my mum. I bought my mum this brooch when I was probably no more than 10 years old. I'd seen it in a shop window as I walked to school every day and thought, I'm sure mum would like that. We didn't have a lot of money, um, but I saved what little bit I could and I eventually saved enough to be able to buy it for her, for her birthday. It's not an expensive brooch. There's no gold stamps on it or anything like that. But my mum wore it with pride and it came to me after she passed away and um, I, I just, it just means a lot to me, does that. And the other thing is this wooden bowl. Quite plain and simple really, but this was made by my husband at school. It's one of the first things he made. He did go on to become a joiner and then teach joinery. But uh, yes, this was one of his first items that he made. So this is quite... It means quite a lot to myself and our daughters. I have more treasured possessions as well, but none of them are really worth a lot. And I think some of our most treasured possessions are things like paintings that children have done or something that somebody's made for you. But if any of our treasured possessions went missing, we would be distraught. But wouldn't we be joyful if they were then returned? This gives us an idea of how the Israelites must have felt at the return of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark contained the tablets of stone on which were written the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. It is believed that the Ten Commandments were written on the stone by God's very own hand and were therefore very treasured. These were the laws by which the Israelites led their lives as being the word of God. The ark itself was a rectangular box, approximately four foot by two and a half and two and a half, made of acacia wood and covered in gold, both inside and out. Along with the two tablets of stone containing the Ten Commandments, the ark also held a golden pot of manna and Aaron's rod. The lid was of solid gold and at both ends were the figures of two cherubims with wings spread out as a sign of God's protection. In Exodus 25, the Lord is instructing Moses on how the ark should be made. And at verse 22, he says, There, above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the covenant of law, I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites. It's no wonder then that the ark was seen as the most holy of treasures, as God would meet them there. There were rings on each of the four corners of the ark so that poles could be put through to enable them to carry the ark from place to place. Now imagine being, having so much gold in it and the stones, it would be quite a heavy item. But the ark was sited in the most holiest of places within the tent of the tabernacle. Sometimes the ark was taken into battle as a symbol of God's protection. But it obviously didn't have a power of its own, as some thought it had, as it was captured by the Philistines. The Ark of the Covenant was special. It was seen as the closest that anyone could get to God. It was seen as a thin line, the thinnest line between earth and the glory of God. I wonder if you've ever experienced a thin line. There are various places where we can experience that one. 
often when viewing the landscape from a mountain or hillside, or looking out to sea where there is that thin line between the sea and the sky. It's a wonderful thing to witness where you can really feel God's presence. And if any of you watched the pilgrimage on BBC at Easter, you would have seen when the pilgrims were taken up a hillside and looked out across the Welsh Valley to the horizon beyond, and we heard their experiences of a thin line. We can now start to understand why David and the Israelites were celebrating so profusely at the return of the ark. It also made me start to wonder what I would miss most from our church. What item within your church brings God closest to you? It will be different things for different people. For me, it would be the cross that we have at our church on the front wall above the altar, because it's what I look at when I want to feel closer to God. For others, it could be the altar table, the banners, the kneelers. In most of our churches, we generally don't have anything as valuable or as ornate as the ark. But what we have means a lot to us in various ways, and we would be as devastated as the Israelites if any of the items were to go missing. We would also be ecstatic once they were returned to us. It would be a real time of celebration. But should we just keep celebrations to special events, whatever they are? Why don't we celebrate worshiping God on a Sunday with the same joy and vigor as David did? I do know that sometimes we come to worship with a heavy heart because things may be happening in our lives and at times like that, we just want to be quiet in God's presence. There may be some of you watching and listening today that really don't feel like celebrating, but God does understand. He knows when we are going through difficult times and he will bring us peace and uphold you through your struggles. But we can celebrate every time we come before God, every time we walk with Jesus beside us, and every time we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit within us. David and his people were really going for it as far as celebrating was concerned. They were dancing, singing and playing various instruments castanets, harps, lyres, tambourines, rattles and cymbals. What a noise it must have been, but a happy noise as they rejoiced at the return of the ark. David also shared food with everyone, another thing that we still do today when celebrating, a way of sharing our good fortune with others. As we heard in our opening prayers, worship should involve our whole being, body, mind and spirit. And you do feel enlivened and empowered when you worship wholeheartedly. There is nothing like the joy that we experience when we have Jesus in our lives. It's the message we try to give those who haven't come into a relationship with Jesus, who haven't had Jesus alongside them, holding their hand, carrying them in their time of need, and most of all, loving them. Jesus' faithful, selfless, unending love for us all should be celebrated on a daily basis. That love which knows no end, that is given to us without conditions attached, that we can access as soon as we open our hearts to God. Jesus said there would be rejoicing in heaven that one sinner had been found and repented. God too rejoices when one who is lost is found. God experiences the joy of finding a most precious possession with a value far greater than money when the lost turn to Jesus. Each one of us is precious to God and he will continue to seek us out, even those who we may think are not worthy of God's attention. God sent his son to seek the lost, to speak with the sinners, to bring the good news of God's kingdom to all. We are all precious to God, just as our treasured possessions are special to us. And just as we despair when treasured possessions are lost, so God is dismayed at those he has lost until he finds them. Then, like us, he rejoices along with the angels. When we worship God, 
Let's worship with joy and in celebration of what he has done for us, for his provision and his love. Let's learn from David what it is to worship with our body, mind and spirit and give our all to our Lord Jesus Christ as we see his glory shining before us. Amen. And our next hymn is Jesus is the name we honour. to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that we can celebrate and worship you. You are our awesome God who delivers everything we have need for. Help us to bring others to know of you, to find the lost and those who need to find a place in their heart for you. Compassionate God, there are so many things that we need to lay before you that are troubling us. Continuing wars and conflict, climate change bringing extreme weather conditions to some, the continued persecution of God's people around the world, the lack of health care for some, the trading of illegal immigrants, the suffering of many through ill health, those facing financial concerns and many other issues. Lord, enable us to fight for the rights of others in whatever way we can to bring peace to your world and your people. May your comforting arms be around all those with worries and sorrow, and may they feel your presence with them, bringing light into their darkness, hope into their weariness, and love into their hearts. Lastly, we pray for ourselves, 
that we can worship you with joy in our hearts and thanksgiving in our souls. Help us to celebrate as we worship, glorifying your name and singing your praises. We offer all these our prayers into your loving care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a final blessing. God of all, send us out into the world with joy. Keep us dancing, keep us singing, and keep us walking in your ways. Keep us open, keep us generous, and keep us ready to give our all to you. And as you have given everything for us. Amen. And our final hymn is Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Thank you.